everyone, my name is Jerzen, I'm a second year medical student and in this video I'm going to talk about an amazing application I discovered about two months ago called Remnote. I'm going to talk about what Remnote actually is, I'm going to talk about how I use it and I'm going to compare it to my older workflow and then go over a little bit of pros and cons of Remnote so you can decide if the application is right for you. To start off I want to talk about what Remnote actually is because it's not your traditional cookie cutter note taking app. Remnote is a note taking app that is similar to apps like Rome Research and Obsidian MD. It's similar in the sense that it's got a very minimal structure and it's got backlinks and features such as tagging. I'm not going to go into those details right now, maybe for another video, but currently I want to talk about how I actually use it compared to other apps that I used to use. One feature that does set Remnote apart from the other applications is the fact that it has integrated flashcards. This is similar to apps like Enki, which use space repetition algorithms. Now if you don't know what space repetition is, it's a whole thing about effective studying. You have active recall, space repetition, and the forgetting curve, but in this video I just want to focus on how I use Remnote. Now to talk about how I actually use Remnote to take notes, we need to talk about the flashcard feature I spoke about earlier. This is important because unlike apps like Anki where you have to convert your notes into flashcards manually, Remnote sort of does it automatically. Hear me out. So if we open a new document here in Remnote and I start typing, so this is going to be our test document. Everything is a bullet point, so you can literally just start typing. You don't need to worry about hierarchies or anything like that. Now in apps like Anki, if you want to make a flashcard, you would use an app like Evernote or Notion to take your notes first, and then you would go to Anki and then make your flashcards out of that. But that usually takes a lot of time. That's why I never really used it. I don't know about other students, but that never really worked for me. I would take my notes down. So for example, let's say this is something I'm taking a note of. If I just put two colons, like so you can automatically see that this became bold and it's basically become the front of a flashcard. This is what sets Remnote apart from the other applications. Now I can type out the back of the flashcard here, like so, and I can preview the flashcard down here if I hover over this. So as you can see, this is something I'm taking a note of has become the front of this flashcard and back of the flashcard has become, well, the back of the flashcard. These are the types of flashcards that you can make. Now we can go into little examples. So let's go into hemodynamic disorders from pathological anatomy and we can scroll down. Let's talk about thrombosis. As you can see here, I've written thrombosis and then I put the two colons. And after that, I've written the definition of thrombosis. It's an inappropriate activation of hemostatic processes which lead to blood clot or thrombi formation with an intact vessel. Awesome. Now, if this was a traditional note-taking app, I would basically write that out as a sentence, and then later, once I'm done with my notes, I would go into Anki and then make the flashcard. It's just more apps, more time. Didn't really work for me. This kind of mitigates that process. And then I can just go underneath, so I talk about the pathogenesis of thrombosis, where called triad, whatnot. We have different types of flashcards in RemNotes. So you have the traditional flashcard that I've made here, but in subjects like pathology, where you have a lot of symptoms to memorize, you would probably need a list. RemNote does that. If I make another example flashcard here, and if I put three colons, one, two, three, instead of two, you can see that it's automatically gone to the next line. And now this is a list. So, you know, list two, list, the third item and if we go down to the hover where the flashcard is you can see that it's now become a list another type of flashcard that you can make is a numbered list flashcard now this is similar to the regular flashcard that we make where you would put two columns and you would also put one and period and then it automatically goes to the next line the difference between a list flashcard and a numbered list is that the numbered list is going to come out in order so each number, each list item is going to become its own flashcard. Now how I organize my notes in RemNote is with the sidebar. So on the sidebar, we can see that I have all my subjects of so physiology, microbiology, uh, communication psychology, and pathology. I've got an emoji for each subject just to make everything a little bit more fun. And within each subject, I have it all divided by the colloquia that we have and all the topics underneath that. Now, each one of these subjects is a folder and each one of these topics is a document. And if I go into the document, you can see that I have my notes in here and they're all flashcards. Now, to practice your flashcards, you would go to your queue. Your queue is universal. It's going to show you flashcards from all your subjects or all your REMs, basically. But if you want to study the flashcard of a specific subject, this is what I usually do. You can see this little icon here which says practice REM in this folder. Now this basically means that you're going to practice the flashcards in that folder. So for example, pathological anatomy again, it's only going to show me the flashcards from this current subject. We can see that instead of other applications like Anki where it's just the flashcard with no context, 
Remnant actually gives you context because it's going to go through the hierarchy and then show you the flashcards. So over here, I can see that this is from cellular injuries, which is a topic that I had. It's talking about irreversible cell injuries, apoptosis in specific, and it's talking about the physiological conditions in which apoptosis occurs. I don't remember this. I will just click space and then, and this has gone into the flashcard interface now. And you can see a lot of things that popped up here on the bottom. These are your reactions to the flashcard. And according to this, the space repetition algorithm will decide when to show you the flashcard again. It has a lot to do with the forgetting curve and all that. I'll get into those in a later video. We also have other options here, such as we can disable this flashcard. We can add this to our edit later in case you notice some spelling errors or anything like that. Or this is something that I really like. If you accidentally clicked the button, you don't necessarily have to tell the algorithm that you didn't get the answer. You can just tell it that you clicked it too early and Remno can show it to you in an hour. So you're just gonna click that here. So I'm gonna press H. Now to talk about the pros and cons of Remno, I would say that the pros are that it's a simple application to use. There's no frills. It's really easy to actually get into a document and start taking notes. The integrated flashcard feature is amazing, especially with the space repetition algorithm. And the third benefit of using Remnote is that it's completely free right now. It's amazing, it's right there, you should try it. To talk about the cons, I would say that it's one, the aesthetic. You can actually write a custom CSS code and there's a ton online, like a lot of templates. You can use one of those, but the default Remno template, in my opinion, doesn't look that great. The second con I would say is stability. It's an app that's still in development, so I would not say that this is something that you need to be concerned about for the long run. Remno is growing. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.